In this section, we'll talk about bias variance trade-off. Bias and variance are important things when it comes to the overall error. Here we'll first look at this bias variance decomposition. With this decomposition, we can show that we can write our errors in terms of a bias square term plus variance term plus noise term. Here this is telling us that all the errors that our models are making are coming from these three types of errors. Bias is the systematic prediction error associated with the model. Variance is the fluctuation of the model with the selected data set. And the noise is just the inherent noise in the system. In this equation, the inherent noise cannot be reduced, but we can play with the bias and variance through model selection, and overall maybe we can reduce the error that we see here. As we said before, bias is the systematic prediction error due to model selection and the assumptions that come with that. And variance is the variability of a model when we fit that model over a selected data set. Let's try to explain these ideas. Assume that we have a data set and we can sample multiple data sets from this original data set. Assume that I sampled three of them, blue, green, and red. And then I will have multiple sets of models and I will fit them on these data sets. First set of models is degree zero, second one is one, and the last one is degree five models. Let's start with the first one. When I fit this type of degree zero models, they will just going to be straight lines. So for that reason, you will see these blue, red, and green lines. With the degree one models, you will see again, kind of like straight lines, but this time having a little bit of slope. So you see these lines this time. With the degree five, things will change slightly. This time we have higher degree polynomials and these polynomials can fit our data sets closer. So here we will see that, for example, if I follow this blue polynomial here, it will just go in between these data points really, really closely. Let's go to the green one, as you see, it goes like this. And the red one, it goes like this. So as you see, these have a tendency to fluctuate quite often, and they also have a tendency to follow these data points really, really closely. When we look at the variance of degree zero versus degree five here, we can quickly realize that we will have high variance here because the models fluctuate a lot. Whereas we will have low variance in degree zero because our models are just constant straight lines. Let's also have a little bit of more examples here, and we'll also try to tie this idea to underfitting and overfitting. Underfitting usually happens with low model complexity, and it tells us that our models are not learning the underlying relationship between the input and output. This usually corresponds to high bias and low variance. Overfitting, on the other hand, usually happens with overcomplex models, and this is usually a generalization problem. So our models do not generalize well beyond the training set, so they do some more mistakes with the test or validation sets. This usually corresponds to low bias and high variance. Here, let's have another example. This example will be similar to what we've seen before, but this time we're also showing you the true function like this. And I'm also showing you the sample data, just one of them here, one of the data sets. Similar to before, we will have multiple data sets, this time more, and we'll fit again multiple models on this. And then we'll take a look at this bias variance terms. Let's start with the first one. Here I have my de degree one models. As you see, these are just some lines. And let's take a look at this second graph here. Here, when we look at the bias variance in the noise terms, let's start with the bias. You see the bias going like this. So here we see this type of response because we have a high bias here. And also we see that our model makes some systematic mistakes. So what I mean by that? So, so all these models are some type of lines, so they will always make these systematic mistakes, especially in these areas. As you see, these are quite large. So it is missing uh, all those true data points over there. And also when we are calculating the bias, we are looking at the true function and how much our typical model that comes out of these models fit or deviate 
from that true function. So this is what we are looking at with bias. And with this type of straight lines, we will, we will always have this type of systematic errors. Because of that, you see that our bias is almost following the data because of this systematic errors. On the other hand, the variance is quite small, as you see, it is right at the bottom here. This is again uh, coming from this line equations. And we also have this noise here. As you see, the noise is just the inherent noise is this is in the system. Overall, the error is just coming from the summation of these three terms. When we sum them up, we have this gray area, which is showing us our total error. Let's switch to degree five. Here with the degree five, we will fit closer to all these data sets. So as you see these red lines, they are kind of deviating slightly more than what we have here. And when we look at this bias variance decomposition here, we are again going to see that the bias went down here. And we see that var variance went up slightly compared to what we have here. Let's go to degree 15. With the degree 15, this time you will see lots of fluctuations. So as you see all these red lines or red functions that you see here or plots, they're all showing a single model. And as you see, we have a lots of fluctuation with these type of plots. So let's see what happens. With this, we see a high variance, as you see, quite large compared to what we had. And, but this time you'll see that the bias went down a lot. So it's, it's quite low, as you see, and the noise is just the same all across the models because it's just the inherent noise in the system. Uh, by the way, we are following this exercise from page 58 of this textbook, so you can also open that up afterwards. So let's also think of this in terms of the underfitting and overfitting. With this current situation, our degree one model is underfitting because we have high bias and low variance. Whereas our degree 15 model is overfitting with the low bias and the high variance. 